Hi everybody, welcome along to this week's video. You might notice I have notes, I've done a little bit of research for this one. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the likelihood of landing that dream lectureship position or indeed going on to your perfect postdoc um, and actually what are the odds of getting that career in academia. So my name is Caroline, I'm a UK based physics lecturer. So I teach and I research and I work at a UK university. And thank you so much for your lovely questions and comments and suggestions. Um, I really like the question asking, you know, how likely am I to be able to land my postdoc position if that's what I'm going for, or my lectureship position if that's what I'm going for. And so I wanted to do a little bit of digging into the numbers just to see actually, you know, how many people go on to become a lecturer. Now, I'm going to start this obviously by saying that I know not everybody doing an undergraduate degree or doing a PhD or indeed doing a postdoc will want to become a lecturer at a university. In fact, I did my PhD and had uh, no intention of staying in academia. Um, I left after my PhD and I went straight into the world of industry. Absolutely loved it. But then a turn of events happened and I ended up back in academia, which I'm also loving. And I've been a university lecturer now for a few years. But I know that many people will do a PhD and not want to go down the lecturer route at the end of it. So this really is a video for if you're thinking about becoming a lecturer. Now I'm a scientist, so my sources of information I guess are leaning a little bit more towards the, the science sector. So the first thing I discovered was the Royal Society. So this is a, a UK science institution. Um, now this data is from a few years ago. I found an article that reported it in 2018, but I think the data's actually come from 2010. So this is old data. But at the time they said people who'd studied for their degree half of them would then go and work outside academia and about 47% of them would stay within academia and then from that 30% so of the overall 100% 30% would become early career researchers and then three and a half percent would become permanent staff and of that 0.45% would become a professor. Now already we've got a little bit of a problem with the numbers so the UK term professor means something slightly different to the US term of professor. And actually the word tenure can mean something a little bit different depending on which country you're in and where you're studying. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to view tenure as being somebody that's in a permanent academic position. Um, so I would consider that I've got tenure because I'm in a permanent lectureship position, but my, my position is different to somebody in America because their tenure has, I think, a slightly more significant meaning, I think. Um, but anyway, tenure is a video for another day. Let's just say that if you've got tenure, you're in a permanent position within a university. So back to the Royal Society, basically from their study, which is a science-based study, from people who studied science, 0.45% of them went on to be a professor and 3.5% of them went on to hold permanent posts at an academic institution. Okay, so then I wanted to have a little look at a US study. Um, so I found one from 2014. And now this study reported that about two and a half thousand students start a physics PhD program at a US university. And then from that, about one and a half thousand apparently complete their PhD. And then it said that each year there's 200 new tenure track pro physics for faculty hired. Oh, I muddled that, didn't I? 200 new tenure track physics faculty people hired. So basically from all the people that start, so all those people that started their PhD, two and a half thousand, eight percent of them who will start became some form of professor. So that's a little bit higher than what I had in my UK numbers. So then I care, I thought, well, I'll have a look at Nature Jobs and see what they're reporting. And they said that one in 10 trainees gain a tenure track position within five years of receiving their PhD. So all these numbers are a little bit different, but I think the one thing they have in common is that these numbers are not very high. So it's not like we're talking 20, 30, 40% of people who study a degree go on to become an academic. Um, and I actually think that kind of makes a lot of sense because if I look at my own university, 
Each year, we typically accept 80 to 120 students on our physics degree course. And then we've got obviously four years of study running. So at any one time, we may have, say, 350 undergraduate students actively studying for their degree. And they are taught by a department which has typically 32 to 35 full time academic staff members. But those staff members aren't changing their career every year. So those staff members are quite static, I guess, in their position at the university. But each year, a new cohort and another cohort and another cohort of students come along. So our, our size of people actually studying undergraduate science is growing and growing and growing. But the number of people that are actually holding the positions and teaching as lecturers is not rapidly expanding. So I guess the, uh, the short answer is that yes, it is very challenging to land a lectureship position, um, slightly less challenging to get a postdoc, but still very difficult and you know can take a lot of attempts before you land that position. And I think this is where academia is actually quite similar to maybe some other subjects and disciplines. So I, when I was thinking about comparisons, I kind of thought about acting and acting community always says you have to have lots of rejections before you land that perfect part in that audition. And actually, I think there's some parallels there with academia. Um, you know, it's not easy to identify and land a lectureship position, and it's not easy necessarily to land a postdoctoral research position. Uh, and the postdoc research positions need to be funded. So as a, a lecturer working within a department, if I would like to have a postdoc working alongside me, I have to find money to fund that postdoc. So I can either go to the university to fund the postdoc, but that's pretty unlikely. It's more likely that I'm going to need to go get research funds somewhere. So I'm going to have to approach a body that supplies money and say, hey, I'd like to apply for a postdoc position, please. And then sometimes I'll need to actually identify the person before I apply for it, if it's a fellowship. Sometimes I would be able to apply for the money, win the money and then appoint somebody. But it's still quite challenging for the academic lecturer to win money for the postdoc. So actually, we need people to win the postdoc money to create those postdoctoral opportunities for then the, the people coming through from their PhD to have that range of opportunities to go into if they want. So it's difficult. And I think, you know, if you're planning to become a lecturer, I do not want to put you off at all because I absolutely love the job. I think it's a really fun, really creative, really interesting job. Um, but that's not to say it's not going to be challenging to get your lectureship position. I was very, very lucky. You know, I was in industry and the right opportunity came up at the right university in an area that I specialised in. And obviously the interview went OK. I was a lot of things fell into place in order for me to get this lectureship position. And I think, you know, if you're getting shortlisted, that is a huge achievement to get on a shortlist for a lectureship post. If you're getting to the interview stage, even if you're not landing the position, to get to the interview means that your CV is ticking the right boxes. You're doing the right things to get to that position. So the short answer to this all basically is yes, it is difficult to become a lecturer. And yes, it is difficult to become a postdoctoral researcher, a teaching fellow, a research fellow. You know, the roles in academia are difficult to land. But the trade off is that if you land them, well, I found it to be rewarding. I really enjoy my job. I like the research community that I work within. And I like the kind of the control over my research space. Um, so this is going to be a, a realistic video. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not difficult. It is difficult, but it's also going to be a positive video because you know, there are things that you can do to improve your chances of landing that postdoc or landing that lectureship position. Um, so what I'm going to do next Monday is say, OK, we've acknowledged that it can be challenging to land your dream job and it's going to be competitive and you might have to compete against many other people in order to get it. But there are things that we can do to help improve our CV, improve our chance of getting shortlisted and improve our chances in the interview. And so next week, I'm going to just share a few ideas from things that I did, things that I've seen when I've interviewed other people and other experiences that I've heard from others about what you can do to help improve your, your chances if you want to have a career in academia. Um, so I really hope you can join me for that video next week. Please do keep the comments and the questions and the suggestions coming in. Don't forget, I'm talking about this from a physics perspective, other departments, other subjects, things might be slightly different. You might have better odds of getting your lectureship position or harder odds for getting your lectureship position. Um, but yeah, 
Our next week on Monday, we'll have a chat about things we can practically do to increase our chances. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you have a good week. I'll be back here on Thursday giving an update on my academic week this week. So we're now in the third week back after university. So lots to report on there. As always, do like, do subscribe, do leave me a comment. I really enjoy reading your comments. Stay safe. I'm going to keep saying it all the time at the moment. To stay safe, look after yourselves. Um, you know, look after you, your environment as much as you can. Stay well and have a good few days. And I will see you on Thursday. Bye.